Okay, so Charles Darwin, uh, many of you probably heard of Charles Darwin, and we credit him with uh, the, as being the person that first recognized the process of evolution. And, and the question is, how did he do that? Where, was he just some smart guy sitting behind a desk who had a eureka moment? Well, he was a smart guy, but what really got him uh, thinking about how evolution might work uh, and that it exists is his work out in the Galapagos Islands, which are a set of islands in the Pacific Ocean off the coast of Ecuador. And he visited those islands as part of an expedition back in the early 1800s. And what he found there were these really interesting birds. Uh, we call them Darwin's finches today because he's the first person that, that told us that they existed and collected some so other people could see them. Uh, but these birds, some of them are really large, some of them are really small. The large ones tend to have very big bills, very big sharp bills, and the small ones have these tiny little thin bills. And those are just the extreme examples. There are different sizes and shapes of bills among all these different species. And when he was out there, he studied these birds quite intensively for quite a while. And what he was able to observe was that the birds that have these giant bills, kind of like a nutcracker that somebody might use to open a, a, a hard nut shell, that's exactly what the birds do. They crack open these very hard seeds to get to the inside where the nutritious part is. Uh, the little tiny birds with the tiny little bills, they obviously could never do that, but they eat tiny seeds like grass seeds, which are super tiny. And to get the nutritious part of this of the seed out of a grass seed, you have to kind of pry it open a little bit like a pair of tweezers. And he observed those birds doing that. And what he was able to deduce or conclude from that was, well, these birds have evolved to become specialized on different kinds of seeds. And part of what, uh, part of the advantage of that is the birds that have the large bills eat the large seeds and they don't ever eat small seeds. And the little birds that eat the small seeds, specialized eat them, they never eat large seeds, so they live together happily. They eat different things, but their biology, their ecology, their morphology, the shape of their bills and so on is all connected in that. And it was, there were other observations that Darwin made, but those are the, that was the, the sort of most important one when he studied his, the, these finches. And part of why he recognized that it must have been an evolutionary process is those birds that do all this really cool separation of food resources based on their body size and bill size, they only occur on those islands. They don't occur in South America, which is the closest continent to those islands. And so what he was also able to, deduce is, to deduce is that at some point in the past, birds from the mainland, which are not Darwin's finches, right? got to the island maybe in a big storm they were carried and that's not uncommon organisms like birds and insects and so on can get carried long distances and when there are hurricanes and so on uh, but then they started specializing to the different food resources that were available on the island and after millions of years we end up with these very distinct kinds of birds they're all darwin's finches they're clearly closely related to each other but they become specialized on different things there's some other cool Darwin finches too. There's one that is called the vampire finch because it specializes on drinking blood from large birds like seabirds that nest there and big lizards that also live there. It's a, it's a parasitic bird. And there are other kinds of Darwin finches too, but it's a fascinating sort of system for recognizing how the evolutionary process unfolded.